Hello and welcome to Your Story Stinks. This time we're going to be talking about Justice League Incarnate. And uh, before we begin, before I really dig into this comic, or I should say, this series of comics, I feel like I need to, I guess, have some just desserts for myself, okay? Because I talk mad shit about Alan Moore, okay? I have gone on record to be very, very critical of Alan Moore, and I don't regret my criticisms, okay? I still think that Watchmen ruined comics, Okay, I still think that The Killing Joke is a terrible comic written by somebody who doesn't understand the characters he's writing. I still believe all that. But, one thing that came up in the conversation about Watchmen when I was doing research was the interview that Alan Moore did like 20 years later where he talked about the reasons that he wrote it and the feelings that he was going through when he wrote it. And one of the specific feelings that he went through when writing Watchmen was that he was killing his fandom for comics. Like, Watchmen for him was him putting to page how he had lost his fandom for comics and how he was moving away from all the things that he felt when he was younger. And how he was in a very dark place, in a very, you know, bad place, and all of his bad feelings came together and became Watchmen. And I don't think I really understood what that was like until I read this comic, until I read Justice League Incarnate, because it's the first comic that I've read where I sat down and was like, I don't know if I can still enjoy comics. After this, I, I don't know if I can still consider myself a fan of of DC Comics after this. And I've read some really bad comics, okay? This comic is not bad, okay? If you're just, like, a casual fan, this probably isn't all that bad. But for me, this is, like, everything bad, every excess that you can imagine. Like, all of the problems that DC has can be like, drawn to this comic. Like, if you said, what are all the problems of DC Comics right now? You should show them this comic and be like, everything that is wrong with this comic, everything that is in this book, is an encapsulation of everything wrong at this company. It's ostensibly, the, the end point, I guess you could say, of Geoff Johns running DC because it has all of his hallmarks. He didn't write this comic, okay? He didn't write this or anything. But it, like, his stewardship of the company and his laziness when it comes to, like, making sure that everything is coherent, like, all of that's on display, okay? Because this is a profoundly lazy comic when it comes to, like, the underlying issues. And I'm going to get into that. But... Let's just say that going into this, I think this comic has killed my, like, fandom for DC Comics. So, let's just start out. Here's here's the issue. DC Comics under Geoff Johns has been a place that a lot of people would say is filled with creativity. And I would argue that it's the exact opposite. Yeah, a lot of new things, but the problem is, is that they're all really shallow and nothing is ever developed. Nothing is ever, like, delved into. Nothing is allowed to breathe. Everything is constantly in your face. Everything is always going bigger and bigger until it becomes so simplistic that it's stupid. Okay? So, first and foremost, one of the things that has happened, like since he took over, is the establishment of the multiverse being front and center. Now, the multiverse in DC Comics has always been a thing. It has been a thing uh, for a very long time. And it's always really made sense, at least in DC, because DC was an amalgamation of a lot of other companies. Unlike Marvel, which was essentially a brainchild of a couple guys, DC has always acquired other companies. That's like how the whole Shazam family you know, entered into DC 
you know, comic canon because they bought out Fawcett Comics. And so they incorporated these characters, you know, into the company. So having a multiverse always kind of made sense for DC until the original Crisis. Okay, Crisis on Infinite Earths. And you could argue that Crisis on Infinite Earths was something that needed to happen just to, like, try to make sense of all of the different universes. But what happened was it became extremely obvious that there was no way for that to last. Everything couldn't exist in one universe because that raised a lot of questions, you know? It, it raised questions like, well, hold on a second, why are, you know, if Superman and Batman exist in the same universe, or, you know, you know Batman and Shazam, why are they always limited to, like, one city, you know? Superman is capable of being a worldwide hero, why exactly is he not locking up the Joker or something, you know? Like, if Green Lantern exists in the same universe, or if Flash exists in the same universe, why are they always isolating themselves, you know? Like, when you start creating a situation where you have hundreds of heroes, basically, existing in, in one universe, y you end up in a situation where you have to ask questions, because nothing makes sense. And so, you know, they rightly decided to go back to the multiverse, and they're like, okay, we're going to have a strict amount of planets, so we're going to have a strict amount of universes. And that was 52. And that mostly worked. Like the idea, okay, we have 52 universes. That's a lot of universes. You can do a lot of things in these universes. Because unfortunately, only like a handful of them are ever developed. Like only a very small amount are ever developed. The problem, of course, was that once people realized that slapping crisis on your title, you know, made it popular or made it sell. They did way too many crisis is <laughs> crises. I don't know. There are too many of them. You know, you had identity crisis, you had infinite crisis, uh, you know, you had final crisis. You know, there, there's just too many of them because each time you do it, each time you go back to the well, you lose you know, you lose the impact. And every time they want to go bigger and bigger and it becomes more convoluted and stupider. And into all of this comes Geoff Johns, genius of coming up with a thousand ideas and never doing the hard work of figuring out how they all work together. So Geoff Johns, as steward of DC's canon and everything else, masterminded what you might say is the dark multiverse which started from uh, Dark Knight's Metal, which ostensibly posits that, yeah, there's a light multiverse and there's also a dark multiverse. Now, for those of you who are keeping track at home, that means that we now have a matter multiverse and an antimatter multiverse. And now we also have a dark multiverse, uh, f which is all of the things that didn't happen essentially. So now we have three multiverses, okay? Uh, now, I'm not ostensibly against the concept of the dark multiverse, of, like, ideas that didn't happen, or things that could have gone differently, you know? That's essentially the concept behind Marvel's What If, okay? And DC used to do something like this, where they called it Elseworlds, Okay, and they would have like, what if this happened instead of this? And that was perfectly fine. The problem is, is that the verse uh, introduced a terrible character in the Batman Who Laughs and a bunch of Batman. And turns out that Batman is just immortal and always, you know, superior to everyone else. And essentially, they just used like Dark Knight's metal to crap on literally everyone else and be like, yeah, if Batman was the Flash, he would be better than the Flash. If Batman was Superman, he would be better than Superman, you know? Like, that's all they did with it. And the the Batman who laughs is the ultimate, like, nonsense 
character of not understanding Batman and not understanding the Joker. It's like, these two things are opposite. If you stuck them together, they would be invincible, is the opposite of the truth. Okay, what it should be is if you took these two opposites and you stuck them together, it would be non-functional and be worse than both of them. Like, that's how it should be. Because they're opposites. Okay, you can't take gravy and peanut butter and throw them together and be like, mm, this is great. No, you can't do that. But, you know, they introduce the dark, you know, the Batman who laughs. And the Batman who laughs is just a deus ex machina figure who is always one step ahead and is always right. And every time you think you win, you've actually lost. And it's just like a narrative convenience character. And it was terrible. And the problem, of course, is that now that you've introduced this character who is now rewriting massive amounts of DC canon, where actually, you know, they're like, well, you know, the whole, like, universe is actually wrong because it turns out everything about the monitor and anti-monitor that you knew before is wrong because in reality it's a demon who started, like, primal, like, caveman figures and one of them was the Bat Clan and that went through history and made Batman and it's all really stupid. <laughs> like, the demon Barbados did all these things and it's really stupid and they're going to destroy all of these worlds and it's just, like, why are we doing this? Why are you rewriting all of this and making it really stupid? Just to do it, ostensibly. But they couldn't stick with that canon because G.F. Johns can't stick with anything for more than, like, five minutes. Okay? So, now that he's rewritten all of history, like, all of DC canon to be like, actually, everything goes back to the beginning at the World Forge with, you know, Barbados and, you know, a hammer guy who's literally forging worlds on a, on a giant hammer. And it turns out that guy is Hawkman because, of course, he is. You know, we did all these things. Well, actually, now we're going to do this thing where we're now in, like, the seventh or eighth dimension, and it's this being called Perpetua, and she's, you know, the like a being of, you know, infinite power, and the Legion of Doom are going to support her. And then she's not anymore, and now we're going to forget about her and completely redo all of that and undo all of this. And if this all sounds stupid, it's because it is. But then they're like, okay, the Dark Multiverse is stupid idea. Let's seal that away. So they, they have another crisis, and they seal that away. And that leads into yet another crisis, which is Dark Crisis, which is what this comic enters into. Now, the story behind Dark Crisis is essentially this. The darkness and the light hate each other, and the darkness and the light agreed to not like fight anymore because the light would stop creating universes, and the darkness would stop trying to destroy them, and everybody was happy with that. Except they weren't happy about that, because then the crisis has happened, and the light basically broke the rules, and now the darkness wants to destroy everything. And that's not, like, rhetorical, that's literal. Okay? Because we've entered the, the point now where it's just the light versus the darkness, literally. Like, that's not a joke. That is, like, that's how the words are written. In the page, like the exposition is like the darkness wanted to con like destroy everything because he didn't want anything to exist, and, and he, you know, the darkness works through all of the various evil figures in the universe. It's just like it's really stupid. So add on top of that an idea which should have been strangled in the crib, which was uh, the one true dark side. So for those of you keeping track at home. Uh, in every universe, there are gods, and in every universe, the gods are different. Except Darkseid, for whatever reason, decided to f merge all 52 of his versions together and become the one true Darkseid. Now, I'm not sure how that works, because Darkseid's a god, okay? And gods are very specific in DC, you know, in DC canon, okay? The gods are, like it's all very blurry and very hard to, like, pin down, because on one hand, gods are, like, omnipotent beings, and on the other hand, they're just, like, everyday, average, you know, beings. Like, Superman fights Darkseid, despite the fact that Darkseid should be a literal god and kill him. You know what I mean? Like, all of the gods of New Genesis and Apocalypse are on the same level as someone like Zeus. And yet, somehow, 
you know, the Justice League regularly fights up, you know, fights Darkseid. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, it's all really stupid. It doesn't make any sense because nothing is clarified and they're too wedded to certain ideas to ever break from them even when they should. And yet, on the other hand, they break with ideas that they should never break from. Anyway, so the whole Dark Crisis thing is Darkseid being like, I'm the one true Darkseid and I'm going to fight the darkness and I'm going to enter the darkness uh, and we're going to go from universe to universe and, you know, chase down like a rift in space and time because Barry Allen has gone missing again because Barry Allen is always the problem in every fucking universe it seems like like how many times do we have to understand that Barry Allen ruins everything like he's turned into a deus ex machina like they're like how do we destroy this universe how do we how do we create a plot point uh have Barry Allen do something moronically stupid you know and anyway so they're chasing down like this rift in space time and then the one true dark side enters the rift in you know and finds the darkness outside of creation and the darkness is like you are a part of me just like all of these other beings that are a part of me which include things like the black hand who started uh like the black lantern core and the gentry which destroyed an entire planet uh and it's just like every villain that you know major cosmic villain is apparently a part of the darkness and they are opposed by the light and it if you feel like this is really stupid and on the nose, it's because it's really stupid and on the nose. Because never in all of my, you know, years of reading comics have I read, like, read a creator who would be like, let's take all of the nuance about good and evil, and let's just, like, simplify them to the point where it's literally light and darkness. <laughs> Like, literally, literally, where, like, the darkness is a void, and all of the bad guys are just sitting in this empty void where they are, are told by the darkness that they are a part of them. Okay? And into this, into all of this stupidity, enters the Justice League Incarnate. Who are the Justice League Incarnate? The Justice League Incarnate are a bunch of members from different universes thrown together ostensibly, without having any understanding of any of their characters, okay? So, for example, we have President Superman from, uh, I think, Earth-10. I'm not sure if it's Earth-10. He's from the he's from the same universe as uh, the hippies, basically, like, uh, like the hippie, like, 1960s groove universe. Uh, where Superman is black and he's president and he's rad, basically. And they seem to think that he's like a super serious character and it's like, like, doesn't fit his universe at all because they've turned him into like a gritty figure as opposed to understanding what that universe is and why it's different from all the other ones. You pair him opposite the Batman from Earth, I want to say Earth 2, Maybe Earth One. I don't remember. It's the Thomas Wayne Flashpoint Batman who's all all dark and gritty and murdery and wants to kill everybody. You put Captain Carrot on there. You put Aquaman on there. You have Mary Marvel as a part of the group. You have the Thor analogy from the universe that is all Marvel character like analogies. You have Avery Ho from Earth Zero. I don't know how there's an Earth Zero, but there is. Um. And it's like you stick all these characters together and because they're all from different universes and because like there's not a huge like there's not a huge explanation or there's not enough time to really detail them as characters they just end up being generic like they all end up being like the same as the regular Justice League <laughs> like there's not there's like nothing about them that makes them, like, any different. So, like, you know, the black Superman is just Kal-El. <laughs> like, that's how he's written. He's not written to be a unique character. He's not written to be, like, a different sort of person. He's just Kal-El, you know. Dark, gritty Batman is just dark, gritty Batman. Aquaman is just Aquaman, you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing about them that distinguishes them. And so the entire comic is just them going from universe to universe. And it's just snapshots. 
of things, and nothing is really like fleshed out or unique. Everything is just sort of watered down. And on top of this, okay, on top of all of this, they feel the need to introduce yet more multiverses. Okay? I know what you're thinking. Hold on a moment. I thought, don't we already have three multiverses? Yes. But we have more now. Okay, now there's not just one more. Okay, it, this is probably where I, I, I kind of lost it. And was just like, I can't deal with this anymore. Like, there was a point where I just kind of sat down and went, Yeah, I can't do this. I'm just, I'm just done. <laughs> like, there was a point to this. And it was when they were like, Yeah, I'm from Multiverse 2. Excuse me? <laughs> Excuse me. So now we have the positive, mul we have the matter multiverse, we have the antimatter multiverse, we have the dark multiverse, we have the positive, negative, or we have the matter, antimatter, dark universes 2 on top of universes 1. And all of this apparently exists between the darkness and the light somehow. And apparently all of this is in danger. And into this is established a new character called Dr. Multiverse, who is one of the worst written characters I think I've ever seen. Dr. Multiverse is the embodiment of a character who is always wrong about everything and never learns. Okay? In every situation, she's like, I can see into every multiverse. I can see into every universe at once. I can see everything. And this is what I need to do. And then she does it. And it's like, oh, I was wrong. And repeat that every issue. Because <laughs> that's what happens. Like, every issue, she's like, I need to do this thing. And forced all this power. I need to make Dark Side win. And then they do. And it's like, well, actually, that was bad and, and ruined everything. And at no point does she ever go... Every time I, I feel like I need to do something, I do it, and then I'm wrong. Maybe instead of doing the thing that I think I need to do, I should do the opposite of that. Because I'm always wrong. <laughs> you know? Like, every single time, she has a vision. And she's like, I can see how this ends, and I need to do this thing. And it's like, okay, you did the thing, and it went poorly. Maybe don't do that again. But no. Just constantly making unilateral decisions, constantly making things worse, and nobody ever calls her out on it. Okay, nobody's ever like, this This woman is stupid, and is constantly doing stupid things, and is constantly making the universe worse and getting people killed. You know, it's just like, nobody ever seems to use their brain cells at any point. They just keep repeating the same stupid ideas over and over again. They just keep making mistakes over and over again. And it's the same mistake. It's not like they're different mistakes. It's not like a revelation where it's like, this is what we need to do, and we did it, but there was a cost. Or this is a thing we think we need to do, and it turns out it was a bad idea because it didn't work out the way we thought it was. It's a situation where one character is unilaterally going, I can see everything and how to do it, and I'm going to do it, and I was wrong, and I'm wrong every single time. Okay, this is not one time, it's like five times. And every time they do it, it gets stupider, because nobody is like, yeah, this is all a bad idea. Like, this is all really stupid. And the problem, of course adding in all of these multiverses and adding all these universes together is that it makes the writers lazy. Okay, the multiverse on a, in a theory is a good idea, but the problem with multiverses writ large is that it makes writers really lazy because it's like they don't have to do any of the hard work of establishing things. They can just be like, oh yeah, this universe is like this. And that's where that character is from. And they never bother to like, you know, flesh anything out. So, for example, Earth-3. Okay, Earth-3 is where all of the evil... Uh, where all of the, like, evil Justice League is. You know, where Ultraman is from, where Owlman is from. You know, all these evil, you know, characters. And they're never like, okay, so in this universe where Superman is evil and Lex Luthor is good, 
or you know all the villains should also be heroes <laughs> you know like in this universe okay so that means that evil wins what does evil winning look like it turns out evil winning looks essentially the same as good winning because they never bother to like flesh out what they are doing you know it's just like yeah ultraman is a guy who does whatever he wants and everything is basically the same except for his temper tantrums occasionally like <laughs> like there's like there's there's no difference in in what he's doing and so it's all very lazy and every universe is like that just worse because unlike earth 3 which actually has some interest and some development all the other universes are basically just like in this universe the justice league is based on magic it's like okay what does that mean we don't know we never bothered to think any of this out and so because they have no ideas and because they're refusing to in, like develop any of their ideas because this would require like writing Instead, they're just like, let's just make a whole nother universe. And it's just like, yep, and now there's not just one multi set of multiverses, now there's two. Now there's, you know, you know, now there's not just the matter universe and the antimatter universe and the dark universe. Now there's a second group of multiverses that are exactly like these ones, except not. And they're trying to be together, and yet they can't be together. And so that's the cri like why do you need multi multiple multiverses, first of all? Okay, look, the matter universe and antimatter universe at least made some sense. You know, at least you could, like, understand that there's matter and antimatter. Okay, you have the monitor and the anti-monitor. Okay, that works. Whatever. All right, the dark multiverse kind of worked because it was just else worlds, except stupid. You know, it's like, oh, here's all these, you know, bad ideas that, you know, never went through. Here's a universe where Supergirl was evil. You know? Okay. Whatever. It's all these, like, what-if stories. Alright. Fine. Whatever. But now they're just like, yeah, now there's, like, a, there's Multiverse 2. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Seriously? And on top of that, they've boiled everything down to everything in the in the multiverses is a, a fight between light and darkness, and light and darkness are both literally sentient. So the light is sentient, and the darkness is sentient, and the darkness is behind everything. Because when you boil it down, like when you get to a point where you're just extrapolating on why things are the way they are and you're trying to draw a big meaning at some point you just literally end up in light and darkness it is the most stereotypical most generic like contrast you can possibly draw like it's not even good and evil it's just light and darkness and you, none of this makes any sense and it's just it's so stupid you know i can i can abide by the concept that there's the presence okay i can abide by the concept that there's a miracle machine and some insane person decided to make an unmiracle machine okay whatever you know i can you know it's just you don't need to keep drawing more backstory to get over the fact that you can't write your like here's what really bugs me stories should develop characters okay you should write a character undergoing things and then they change as a result the problem is, is that the focus is not on what's happening it's on all the stuff that happened before so everything is just exposition it's just endless amounts of like them going oh remember the dark multiverse was because of the demon barbados and batman is not actually because of his individual trauma it's because at the beginning of the human race there was a bat tribe and they had a bat symbol and you know because of the demon barbados and it went all through history and then he became batman because of the demon barbados and that's really stupid and then they're like well okay uh instead the demon barbados was actually a minion of the darkness and the darkness is it's something that exists throughout time and he's also behind dark side and he's also behind apocalypse and he's behind all of the bad things and he wants to destroy the multiverse 
yeah, we've never mentioned him in like 90 years worth of comics, but we have to keep writing him. Uh, also, uh, he was behind the Black Hand and Blackest Night, and also he was behind, you know, everything else that's bad. And it's just like, what? <laughs> Why? And it's like, oh yeah, we had a, we have the multiverse, and it's got 52, and I know like 10 years ago when we did like Infinite Crisis or whatever, and we redid the multiverse... Yeah, that wasn't enough for us. 52 universes wasn't enough. So now we need Multiverse 2, where there's 52 more universes. And it's just like, why are we here? What are you doing? You can't even, you can't even like, write good stories in your own universe. It seems like you're running away from writing stories. It feels like, instead of writing a story, they're fleeing from story writing. Where they're just like, we can't write characters developing, we can't write individuals having storylines. We can't write, like, things happening to them. We need to instead write them constantly reacting to crisis after crisis. Focus is not on the characters, and their focus is on all of this new exposition about the setting that we keep writing to get away from the fact that we can't write characters. Like... Everything about these comics, everything about DC Comics right now, is setting-focused. Where the setting is the most important part. Like, they're not caring about the characters, or what they're about, or what they care about. It's just revising, and revising, and revising the setting over and over again. Where the important thing is the multiverse, over and over again. That's all it is. They're like, the multiverse is, is, the, is in crisis, and we have to constantly focus on the multiverse, and the expanding multiverse, and the battle between light and darkness, and it's just, it's, it's just so tiring. Like, it's just so tiring. Like, it, it's just, it, it, I felt this before, kind of when I read Three Jokers and it was an attempt to make something clear that did not need to be made clear and did so in the stupidest way possible because it was entirely focused on the past for no reason. But this really, like... I don't know, it, it makes me... I guess this is me, like, giving up on DC Comics because... DC Comics at this point is just making comics about the setting of DC Comics. Like, it's not about the characters, it's not about, like, anything personal, it's not about, like, battles, it's not about, like, you know, introducing new concepts, it's just, it's just about the setting. Like, the most interesting thing to the people who are writing DC Comics is the setting and what happens to the setting and how many changes we can make to the setting. You know, how, you know, what, what will be the effect on the universes? Who cares? Like, why are, like, the universes are not characters. The universes are not individuals. The universes don't have feelings. They're just there. Okay? They're not, like... It's who lives in these universes and everything that matters, and you've taken all of the focus off of these characters to instead be like, no, what matters is the fact that there are these forces that are shaping, you know, the multiverses, and it's just, it's just, every time they, they hit the wall of, oh, this is really boring and repetitive, their go-to is, rather than develop any of this, it's to add more to it. And they've written themselves into a corner because now it's just the battle of light and darkness in a literal sense. And so there's no nuance, there's no, like, depth, there's just, like, it's it's just... It's just stupid, man. It's just really stupid and boring, and it's tiring to read. And I just, reading it could feel my fandom dying. Like... I, I, even before this, I was like, man, maybe there's some way that they can, like, reverse the ship. Maybe there's a way that they can, like, fix things. Maybe there's a way that they can, like, turn back, or maybe there's just, like, something good will come of this. You know, that was my thought process. Okay, my thought, like, but no. No. 
It's just, it's dead. And I think what makes me sad is that DCU is kind of like my hope for superhero comics. Because Marvel, for me, has been dead since, like, Civil War II. And it's only gotten worse since that. Since Civil War II, everything has just gotten infinitely worse in terms of the writers. And in DC Comics, I've been like, yeah, it's all stupid, but maybe, you know, occasionally there's some good in there. And now it's just like, no, everything here is bad. And it, it, it continues to be curious to me that in an age where superhero properties are extremely mainstream and have never been more profitable, comics themselves have never been worse. <laughs> like, 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 comics properties, movies, television, you know, merchandise, have never been more mainstream, have never been, you know, more profitable, have never been more like, publicly accepted, and yet the properties that these things are based on have never been worse, okay? In fact, I think that comics have not been this bad since, like, the early to mid-90s, when everything was super edgy and over-designed and gritty, and now we've, like, like, that was to such an extreme where everything... Like at that, t like at that time in the early to mid '90s, everything was about edge. Like it didn't matter. Like it didn't matter what the characters were. It didn't matter about what made sense. It didn't matter about plot or anything else. All that mattered was that everything was edgy and extreme and brutal. And you know, it's basically everything that Rob Liefeld dreamed up. You know, in Image Comics. Now all the comics are like like, everything is about the setting. There's nothing in here to grab onto. The characters are flat and lifeless. The ideas are constantly, like, inane because nothing is developed and there's no payoff for paying attention. There's no real good character moments because every character is a moron because the only way that, like, anything can happen is by characters repeating the same mistakes over and over again. And it's just... It's just bad. And it, it, reading it breaks my heart. Okay, reading this makes me go, DC Comics is, is not going to be good. It can't be good until they fire basically everybody who is currently in charge because the comics are awful. And it is just super super depressing to like to just it, it's just super depressing to read them and I just I can't hold out hope anymore like this just crushed my soul <laughs> reading this this was soul crushing and it's it's weird when you think about it because it's like is Justice League Incarnate a terrible comic no like it, it's not, like, super offensive. It's not like it's super... Like, I've read some super bad comics, okay? It's not like... It's not like Holy Terror, okay? Where it is, like, offensive to read. It's... It's, it's just soul-crushing because it's... It's everything wrong with modern DC comics. And it, it pretty much shows that they're not going to course-correct... And there hasn't been any lessons learned from what they've been doing. Like, either because they are incapable, or because they're too stubborn, or because that they think this is where comics should be. They are continuing to plow ahead with their worst ideas, and continuing to double down on all of the things that are ruining the comics. And I just can't see them getting any better. Like... Everything about this makes me go, yeah, comics suck. <laughs> like, comics just suck right now. Like, DC Comics is terrible right now. And they're not fun to read. Like, it's, it's just not fun. It's not enjoyable. It just, it makes me unhappy to read them. I feel worse after reading this comic. And not because of the comic, but because of everything it represents and everything it introduces and the directions that it takes. It's just, it's just not good. And I, 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 I can't, I don't know. 
I can't I can't expound any about it anymore. It's just bad, and it, it it makes me sad. It doesn't make me angry. It just makes me very sad. <laughs> like it just makes me go, yeah. There's just not good. <sighs> anyway, that's it. That's Justice League Incarnate. It's really bad. DC Comics is really bad. Their story stinks. 